let's look at a fourth claim now. f of m is big O of g of m. Does this imply that 2 to the power f of m is in big O of 2 to the power g of m? Again, you need to prove or disprove this claim. So, as always, let's start with what is given to us. Let's use the definition of the big O notation to express what has been given to us. If f of n is big O of g of n, then there exists a constant c greater than 0 such that for all n larger than some threshold n naught, f of n is bounded from above by a constant multiple of g of n. This is what's given to us. And we need to prove that this function is big O of this function, or that there exists a constant k greater than 0, such that for all n larger than or equal to some threshold n sub k, 2 to the power f of n is less than or equal to this constant times this function. So 2 to the power f of n is bounded from above by a constant multiple of 2 to the power g of n. So how do we go about proving this? Well again, if, if we look at the form of the inequality that we have, and the form of inequal the inequality that we desire. Maybe one of the things we could do to transition from here to here is to take 2 to the power of both sides. If, if you look at the function y is equal to 2 to the power x, this function increases exponentially. Okay, at, at x equal to 1, the function has a value of 2. At x equal to 2, it has a value of 4. At x equal to 3, it has a value of 8 and so on. It's a function that increases with x. So, if a and b are two points of two values, two, po two potential values of x, say a and b here. And if a is less than b, then 2 to the power a is going to be less than 2 to the power b. So, I can put a less than or equal to sign here. So, if f of n is less than or equal to c times g of n, we can take 2 to the power of both sides and we'll get 2 to the power f of n is less than or equal to 2 to the power c times g of n. We can express this as 2 to the power f of n is less than or equal to 2 to the power c and the whole thing raised to the power g of n. So this is given and we need to prove that 2 to the power f of n is less than or equal to k times 2 to the power g of n. Now again, as in the previous problem, let's assume that without loss of generality that the value of c we are looking at is greater than 1. 
So if, if the value of c is greater than 1, then this number, this the base of this power is a number greater than 2. So for example, if c is equal to 2, this is going to be 4 to the power g of n. So if you are given that 2 to the power f of n is less than or equal to 4 to the power g of n, can we say that 2 to the power f of n is less than or equal to some constant times 2 to the power g of n? Well, it looks as if what has been given to us is that 2 to the power f of n is less than or equal to some huge number and we are asked to prove that 2 to the power f of n is less than or equal to some not so huge number. Like the, the base of the power here is 2. The base of the power here is going to be 2 to the power c. And it's unlikely that if you take this exponential and you multiply it with some constant k that you will be able to overtake this function. So ideally the way to prove this would have been if this was less than or equal to this, if we could show that, like we did in the previous part, then we would prove by transitivity that 2 to the power f of n is less than or equal to k times 2 to the power g of n. But in, in, in this problem, it appears as if that's not going to be the case because we, we, we seem to have something here which is much greater than, which is potentially much greater than what we have here. Since the base is the the base of the exponential is larger over here. Now maybe one of the ways to crystallize this intuition or to verify that this is indeed the case would be to try to come up with a counterexample to this implication based on the intuition that we're getting here. So since since the base of the exponential here seems to make all the difference, let's try to choose values, specific functions and values for c so that we can actually test, test this out. So let's say we take f of n as I don't know, um, say n and let's say we take g of n as just as a first attempt, um, 2n. So is f of n in big O g of n? Yes, it is. Is f of n, is it, what about 2 to the power f of n? If we take 2 to the power f of n, we get 2 to the power n. And if we take 2 to the power g of n, we get 2 to the power 2n, which is really 4 to the power n. So in this case, f of n is um, f of n is growing pretty much at the same rate as g of n. So f of n is in big O g of n. But if we take 2 to the power of both sides, we find that g of n is growing at a much more faster rate than f of n. Because if you take the ratio of these two functions, 2 to the power n and 4 to the power n, and if you take the limit of n tending to infinity, we are going to get 2 by 4 to the power n, which is 1 by 2 to the power n, which is basically 0 as n becomes very large. So, in this case, for this particular example, we seem to have gotten something consistent with this claim because 2 to the power n is in big O of 4 to the power n, since 2 to the power n grows at a slower rate. But this example also tells us how we could create, uh, how we could test out what we saw here. Let's say we switch these two. Let's say we take f of n to be 2n and g of n to be n. Now we are going to get 4 to the power n as the power of f of n and 2 to the power n as the power of g of n. So it's a 2 to the power f of n is then going to be 2 to the power 2n, which is 4 to the power n. 2 to the power g of n now is going to become 2 to the power n. Now f of n is growing at a much more 
larger way than g of n. So, even though both of these functions were going at the same rate, and so we could call either of them as big O of the other, because they are really big theta of one another. If they are big theta of one another, they are also big O of each other. So 2, 2n is big O of n. But if we take 2 to the power 2n, we get 4 to the power n. And if we take 2 to the power n, we just get 2 to the power n, a smaller base than the base over here, which is 4. Now 4 to the power n is, is 4 to the power n in big O of 2 to the power n? No, because if we take the ratio of these two, that ratio is going to tend to infinity as we take limit n tending to infinity. So 4 to the power n is actually little omega of 2 to the power n. 4 to the power n is growing at a larger rate. So we seem to have gotten a counter example. We seem to have obtained a counter example to this claim. We take f of n as 2n and g of n as n. By taking these two functions, by choosing these two functions in this way, we have crystallized our intuition here that when we take 2 to the power of both sides, it's possible the constant factor could enter into the base of the exponential and that may create difficulties for, for this inequality to, for this equality, for this claim to hold that 2 to the power f of n is big O of 2 to the power g of n. So that's why we're taking f of n as 2n and g of n as n, so that when we take 2 to the power of both sides, we're going to get a larger base over here. And if we get a larger base over here, and even though these two, f of n was big O of g of n earlier, when we take 2 to the power of both sides, this is going to now have a larger base than this function. And so, it won't be big O of this function. 4 to the power n is not big O, 2 to the power n, for example. And so this claim is actually disproven because we have a counter example.